Hello viewers, this is Gilmer and this is episode 71 of my Let's Play War in the East. I am playing as the Soviets and this is um, really my second attempt at a video tonight. I'm really having issues. I, I was playing around with this little grease pencil thing or whatever they call it, the drawing mode and was showing some things and I accidentally clicked stop record. So I have a seven minute video where I wasn't, I really didn't get anything done and I don't think I'll post a seven minute video, but what I was doing was I was showing if uh, I can find it and I can't find it at this point, but there was a, a an attack I did on this unit right here and it failed in my last episode. And I was talking about that episode about how those stacks were attacking across the river and that's why that failed. And I, you know, this is, this draw mode is something new that I've found. And then, of course, I had this attack in my last episode where I was attacking across that river. And this is a bigger river, actually. There's a river there. I mean, it's the same river, but these two sides are covered by a river. And then this stack was attacking, not across a river, just across land. But it was three stacks against this one guy, and he held... And it was because, probably because, two of my stacks were actually attacking across a river. The other thing that I was talking about in the episode that I decided to can from just a few minutes ago, I have pocketed these three units, and hopefully next turn I will be able to get them to be surrendered. And then, I don't know, I haven't had any issues as you can see, I kind of wandered around up here with one of my one of my cavalry units, this unit right here, and uh, I didn't run into any opposition. I didn't run into anybody who was exerting a zone of control, and so I'm wondering if Gomel is actually defended at this point. It probably is, and the thing that I would really love to do is, as you can see, I've cut this line, which it wasn't really going to anybody, but as you can tell I'm just one hex away from cutting this line and then that means these units aren't necessarily in too much trouble because of this rail line that they still hold but if I could cut that line maybe here because that's right there on on the they're sitting right on top of the rail unit I really and truly believe that every unit on the other side of this rail and I'm talking this one, this one, this one, this one, this, these two, this one, and then these two stacks of very powerful units, as you can see, regular infantry units. I got a feeling that their supply would be in really bad shape. And it's just a question of trying to break this unit. As a matter of fact, I still have three units that can attack him. Oh my, <laughs> nicely done. So, I don't know that he'll hold, but they might. But even if they don't, oh, I still got to cut this one off. And I can't get there. No. So... I'm going to move him back. I'm going to move him back. Because there's a good chance that they're going to get, they were going to get destroyed on this next turn. And I would have taken that gamble if I had, you know, if I had not re forgotten that I hadn't cut this side off yet. I've got to cut this side off and then cut that off. And I'm really kind of depressed that you know, but I've got a pretty good little set of stack right here to uh, attack whoever moves into that spot. Or maybe even here. And um, you never know. And so I think that these units could be in some trouble. I'm just saying that unless they're able to 
put some units around here and uh, shore off this little incursion, they might be in a little bit of trouble. Um, I'm not going to guarantee it, but I do think that there would be a chance of actually doing some damage to them and, um, you know, taking out all those units. I'd love to do that. That would probably be the best thing that I had done in the game so far is, is to cut off. Because, I mean, it would cut off, literally cut off these three. Nine, you know, total of nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Uh, you know, these two units, maybe not. That You know, they'd still be getting supply overland through here. And maybe even to a certain extent this one. But I've got to believe that these others would be in serious trouble. So, we can hope, can't we? Now that guy is very strong. That stack is very strong. And, that's, and that stack is kind of weak. But I can't really get him out of there. I guess I could do this. I still can't move him because of this guy. And really probably this guy too. How about this one? Yeah, they could move, but where are they going to move to? So, we'll move you back. I guess I could have taken back my turn here, but regardless, we'll, we'll push on. So I really don't have much left to do on this turn. I guess I could... Because I did most of my tax attacks on the turn on the episode that there's no narration. I did most of my attacks on. And there's not really much else to do. Uh, let's just go ahead. Let's go ahead and process our turn. Because 23 minutes. It's I've got about 23 minutes on this episode. Which means, I, I, I mean, I'll go over if I have to. If, if the turn takes that long. But... 23 minutes is a good amount of time to hopefully get in the, uh, the AI turn. I've been playing a PBEM of Aaliyah Jacta East or Yakta East or whatever they call however they pronounce it. I guess that's Latin. And uh, I'm playing Pompeii, and my opponent is playing Caesar. And I'm actually doing pretty well. It's the same person that killed me in this game on a scenario. And he's not as as uh, knowledgeable, say, on the Aja games as I am. But he killed me on this because he's more knowledgeable on this game than I am. And so, I, you know, I'm doing fairly well against him in the Aja game. And I don't, you know... I hope he's enjoying it because I'm enjoying it. But I, you know, I lost the the scenario that we had in War in the East, and I enjoyed that. I I learned a whole hell of a lot. I didn't didn't even come close to winning that scenario, but that was kind of almost the impetus for me to actually play do a let's play of War in the East because I, you know, I've been thinking about it. I've been kicking around the idea. Of doing a let's play of the grand campaign and i just kept putting it off and putting it off and thinking well you know it's you know it, it's going to take forever to do and one of the things that i like about the ajog games is you can play it usually play even a grand campaign you can excuse me damn you can usually do a grand campaign in about a couple of weeks 30 or 40 turns or so, I mean, if this was an AJOG game, I'd be finished by now. Either lost or won, but I just decided that I really did want to get into this game more. And this is helping me understand it more and want to play it more. As well as I'm hoping it's helping others want to play it more, maybe even understand it more. I've had a couple of people say that they have learned some things, which is gratifying to me. Because I'm pretty, I'm not, I don't think I know as much as I should by any means. But I have learned a lot since playing it. And I'm trying to disperse that information to the viewers. Because 
they might be in the same boat I was before I started this Let's Play. And, you know, if it helps them understand the game and play it better and, and be better at it, then uh, that's definitely the goal that I always had to begin with. So, the AI is processing their turn, and we're doing a lot of interdiction, which is, is really nice. I like that because I think it slows them down, weakens them. It, it you know, it, they can't do maybe as many attacks, or they look like they're moving their units around a lot for whatever reason. I hope that means that they're concerned about certain areas. It does look like they're moving troops into the area that I said was looked very weakly defended around Gomel. It did look like they were putting several units in there, which is kind of disappointing if they did because I was hoping, I was hoping to get that nice big pocket of about 15 units or so, which is about all I can hope for at this point. I mean, I'm not saying that in a you know, I'm discouraged kind of way. It's just more of a realistic kind of way of you just got to, you know, you got to do what you can do and hope you get, hope you're able to get those little tiny points where you're able to press an advantage. Do I have a unit way up there? If I did, it fought pretty well, actually. I'm surprised I haven't destroyed these two units up here. But see, they, they, they look like they might be moving a little bit further in. You know, it's kind of not anything I planned, but it's kind of mirroring the theory I had that if you, you're weak in some areas that, and you're, you're strong around the outside they'll kind of flow into the weak area and then you can cut them off by uh, cutting them off at the you know the the, the uh, initial point of the line where they quote unquote broke through yeah it looks like they got a few units around Gomel but I still looks like I could still do this right here. See, these units would be in a lot of trouble if I could put a, a unit on one of these on this line some here, somewhere here, and also well, it looks like I control that crossroads, so they would be really screwed if I was able to get. Uh, yeah, that's really probably a dumb of me that I didn't realize that I already had that side cut off. But, uh, yeah, that would be nice to kind of do a little pocket there of maybe 10 to 15 units or 10 to 12 units of German units. And some of them are pretty strong. They all look like regular infantry units or divisions. I didn't see any panzer divisions in that area, but, you know, you take what you can get. Even infantry divisions would be, you know, a, a hell of a shot against them. Oh, we retreated. We outnumbered them and we retreated. I don't like that. Our guys shouldn't do that. that. Maybe that's why the Soviets were shooting some of their generals. Not a lot, but enough. Germans, too. No, they shouldn't. I mean, you know, I don't, it's almost impossible to take a side in that situation. Who do you want? The Soviets to shoot their generals or the Germans to shoot their generals? Well, wouldn't mind either one of them doing it. Sucks for the guy getting shot, though. Yeah, see, they're, they're still real strong. Core Sun Pocket, so they're starting to do it again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pocket them around Core Sun. I'm 
I'm sorry. I have the TV on in the background again. It, I have the sound down fairly low, but you, you know, sometimes people can pick up a little bit of a mumbling coming from it. These guys are going to be in shit a shitload of trouble, which will be very, very nice for me if I'm able to get over to that rail line. I, in my opinion, I think they'll be in trouble because I th I don't think they'll have any way to get any supply, especially if the weather gets bad. I could scroll up and look at it a little bit more. Look at that unit. That unit's weak as hell looking. This is my guy. What the hell is he doing way the hell over there? Oh, God. Why did he only have 5,000 men? We're in trouble. Look at that. That guy will retreat immediately. That guy's going to be in trouble, too, because he looks like he's off on his own. So they pushed me back in a couple places, and uh, they're looking really strong in some places. But I think um, I'm strong enough to counter counterattack and maybe cut some of them off. We had 860. What the hell, man? Come on. You can't tell me that all of my units had that little amount of men in it. I might be in really big trouble there. These units are in trouble. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Because I'm not, I'm not freaking letting them get away with the kind of crap they've been pulling. They're dead.
Wow, I survived. That was a rough turn. But I told you, the summer of 42 can get rough for the Soviet Union at times. You just gotta play it tough. They've lost 1,758,000. I've lost 4,555,000. These units, oh, if I could ever get onto it, in my opinion, these units are in trouble. Because of that. They made it easier for me than these guys got out of their bubble. Look at that. These guys are in trouble now. They're pocketed. And, uh, they better hope bad weather doesn't hit. Because if it does, they're definitely in big trouble. So that was a tough that was a tough uh turn. I got I got destroyed on pretty badly on a couple of spots. Not very happy about that. Look at this. See I can't can't really do anything about those guys. I got to I got to back up and get them the hell out of dodge and get these guys out of dodge Shit, look at the movement points on him. Too bad I can't use him anywhere. This is just a, a strategic movement in the other direction. I just gotta make sure that things don't go completely Okay, let's see.
division, division, division. Let's put them on the Briansk front. And then we'll get them. That's not good. Oh, that's their guy. Oh, well, those are the guys we've got cut off. Hopefully. go there we go just a question of figuring out how to use it how to how to make this work to my advantage so see how they moved guys in here in a kind of a checkerboard faction to keep me from getting up in here but it didn't stop me from cutting these guys off hopefully I'll be able to keep them cut off and uh, eventually make them surrender kind of short-circuited a bunch of stuff that I was thinking about doing. But that's the name of the game. Sometimes maybe that's what they were there doing. They were moving a bunch of units down to that area because they could see that they could get a breakthrough or a breakout. But they don't have much time before the bad weather starts hitting. And once it does... They're going to be in shitload of trouble. Because I'm not going to be showing any mercy. I'm going to be like uh, Cobra Kai. Mercy is for the weak. Sweep the leg. See, they, they haven't moved anybody. Oh, that's... No, that's not. But I can't get anybody across that river. I bet if I unselected them, I could, yeah. But a tank brigade across that river? Yeah, I don't think it's going to work. Come on, you know you want to. See how they got a, a unit. I mean, they got pretty much a steady line, but a couple of places they've got a unit and then an empty hex and then a unit and then an empty hex and then a unit. Then it, it's because they, can, they know that that zone of control will keep me from moving in between them, but it's still kind of, see how it's kind of weakened them? You can't just, I mean, it's it's very hard to get away with that. I just got to figure out what unit I want to move with them there. So now I'm across a, I'm in a, yeah, I'm in a pretty good position there, in my opinion. I mean...
I could start rolling up this these little this little group of people hopefully if I could just get this to work that's okay as long as we're reducing their fort all right folks it, it's been 30 minutes and uh, I think it's uh, a good spot to probably call a, call it a day on this episode and um, you know the thumbnail I'm not gonna put a lot of effort into the thumbnail I think I'm running out of Russian generals or I'm getting to the level that nobody even knew who the hell they were type generals and you know I, I'm, I'm just gonna just bounce around I think and see which ones I can pull up there's a there are a few that I really like you know we haven't really looked at although I don't necessarily know that I have the time to do this I haven't looked at some of these units in a while or some of these he's 40 of 31 20 of 15 he still has a losing record Chuikov, 12 and 5. That's his 60th army. He's got a losing record. He still has a losing record, but I think he's done a, a lot to improve that. It, I think it was really bad at one point. I mean, a whole hell of a lot worse than that. Um, you still have a pretty good amount that are that have losing records, but look at this guy, 76 and 43. That guy is bad ass. 72 and 64 he's got a bad record but what are you gonna do he's got a pretty bad record and his record's pretty bad 43 and 31 is pretty good 41 and 36 that's okay we won't shoot you for that so as you can see that the win loss is getting a whole hell of a lot better for a lot of these guys I should put him somewhere because He's got a good win-loss record, and he knows how to win. I don't care if you're good, just if you know how to win. So, 50 and 19. Kick ass, dude. That's pretty good right there. Against the Germans, 50 and 19. That's pretty good. That's five out of basically seven, which is uh, what? He's winning about 70% of his battles against the Germans. That's not too shabby, pal. We'll take that any day. 43 and 31, that's what? Right around 60% or so, maybe. So he's doing all right as well. 76 and 43. That guy's kicking ass. That's, um... Yeah. That's about, what, 66% or so, maybe? Maybe slightly less than 66%, maybe 63 or 64%. That's not bad, though. 47 and 24. Kick ass, dude. That's right at 66% or so. Just slightly less than two thirds, obviously, because two thirds would be 48 and 24. So he's just slightly less, right at 66, 65%. One loss. Dude, you got to get on the ball. 26 and 70. That's not good. You, you need to you need to tighten it up a little too. All right. Well, anyway, I've talked for a few minutes. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.